What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Wow, it felt really good to say that. I haven't said that in over a year. I haven't been really in touch with the Linux world for quite a while, so I'd like to see how Linux Mint has come along. And I guess this is the best point to check Linux Mint out because 21.3 beta has just dropped. So with that in mind, let's jump right in. Now, this, I made changes to the wallpaper. It's not default Linux Mint uh, wallpaper. This is 21.3 Virginia, as I mentioned. And on boot, you would get to see a welcome screen. So for example, I guess if I search with welcome, it should pop right up. Welcome to Linux Mint. I default it's in light mode. I went ahead and changed it to dark because who uses light, right? Well, I do. So once we click on let's go, it'll take us to the different pages. It'll take us through first steps, documentation, help and contribute. Now, if you are new to Linux Mint, this is one of the better distributions in the Linux world. It is very famous and famous is an understatement. It is one of my favorite distros uh, along with Pop OS. Linux Mint just knows how to do everything perfect. Now, if you are a gamer, you can still use Linux Mint. You might know that it chips with the default kernel in the LTS version, but we have a way to change that. So stick around to the end to find out. Anyway, let's get on with our tour. So the first is the desktop colors. So I'm expecting some changes to be here and oh my God, it looks different. I don't remember it being like this. So we have style, appearance and color, and this looks way more modern. We have Advaita, High Contrast, Mint L, Mint X, and Mint T, Mint Y, I guess. And well, let's let's go ahead with the light mode for a minute. Let's check out the start menu, update manager, internet connections, the clock, along with the date and calendar, and you also have the sound panel. What's interesting is once I hover I can see the volume percentage once I hover over each of these applications. If they're not open, they would show me what it is, like files. And if it is open, it would just show me the tab, which is really good. One of the things that I don't like is there's, they seem to be squished in the middle, I mean, in the left, with no space between them. I, I'm not, not, not the biggest fan of this, but again, Linux Mint is very easily customizable, so there is nothing to worry about. Let's stick to dark mode for this video because I really vibe with this and there are a ton of color options. This is again something new which I hadn't really seen earlier. Let's go ahead with this and let's see what kind of changes it brings. So I can notice that the color is blue of the text box and if I open something like file manager, which Nemo it is by the way, you can see that the icons have changed color too. Let's go ahead and choose a different one. Man, these look very similar. Let's take green and the colors have changed. Let's stick with green for this video because it looks cool. And as you can see, uh, cross icon has changed as well in addition to the file manager icons. Now, another thing I'm noticing is I don't really remember if I had seen this cursor pack before, but it looks modern and it definitely isn't what I encountered earlier. Well, the bottom edges are still not rounded, but I'm not taking that as a complaint or whatever. It just doesn't really matter. But anyway, the cursor I think is really cool how they have done the styles with different colors for different corners. And uh, like if you want to expand this, I, I really appreciate uh, the color scheme. Let's click on advanced settings. Okay, so this is the look that traditional Linux Mint users are going to be familiar with. This is not Advaita, this is Bibata, Bibata. I have no idea, but this is the one which we used originally. And I like this, I'm not complaining. We have both white and dark versions and they're pretty good. You can change the application button styles. Again, this is gonna be very, very familiar territory if someone has used Linux Mint before and you have the options to change desktop as well. I like the simplified settings, so let's just stick with that for the rest of the video and we can go ahead into advanced whenever we like. So what are some of the things that are new in Linux Mint this time around? Because this is after all a beta version, right? So let's open up Firefox. Again, 
uh, everything latest, I'm assuming, about Firefox. It should be 120. Okay, it says Mint 001, and then again 120. Okay, updates disabled by our system administrator. So I guess this is updated by Flatpak or Flathub. So one of the things that has uh, that's new this time around is Linux Mint 21.3 comes with full support for secure boot and compatibility with a wider variety of BIOS and EFI implementations. This is very good news for people who want to dual boot because honestly, I use Windows too. I use it every day and I like Linux too. Another thing which is new is Hypnotics. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I tried to open Hypnotics a few minutes ago just before the video and I don't think I have any channels. It says getting playlist, but it shows like zero TV shows, zero movies, and zero series. So I'm not really sure what to do next, but you can see that Hypnotics has a few additions. So you can now set channels as favorites. You can, from the main screen, click on the star icon to access your favorites, which would be this icon. And all your favorite channels are grouped together, no matter what TV provider they initially came from. Now, I remember using Hypnotics before, way before, like one to two years ago. And it used to be a really good way to see TV, but I'm not sure why Hypnotics is not giving me anything over here. But anyway, if you guys have the solution, please mention it to me and we're going to move on right now. Another thing is you can use Hypnotics to create your own channels and you can also have custom TV channels, or you can also have YouTube right into right in Hypnotics. So what how it works is it uses the upstream YT DLP project, which can sometimes break because if YouTube changes something in upstream, then the package breaks and you're not able to uh, watch videos. But so to conquer this problem, what Linux Mint has done is the Hypnotics app now gets its own update from GitHub and it can use a local version so that it doesn't break continuity or compatibility with the upstream YouTube and you can watch your videos seamlessly. Another thing which is new this time around is Linux Mint 6. So I'm not really sure if Linux Mint 6 was in earlier versions, but for me at least this is the one I'm going to be using. So Cinnamon 6 it is. And we already had applets, desklets, extensions and themes. In Linux Mint, I already showed you themes. But what is new this time around is it's actions. So actions are what previously were known as Nemo actions, and they are basically add-ons for your file manager's context menu. So context menu would be the right click that you do and the menu that you get. So for example, you can add verify, make bootable USB stick, and different options in your context menu. Now I believe it's just a search away. So if I go to start and if I search for actions, it'll take me to it. And as you can see, we have manage and download. We have two pages and we can download multiple actions. For example, send as attachment, which I think would be really helpful. Get on system monitor again for people like me. Uh, like I love looking at the graphs and this is something that I would really be interested in. Okay, let's move on. Now, again, one of the better things about this uh, beta version is that they have started work on implementing Wayland experimentally. Now, don't expect Wayland to drop into Linux Mint and replace x.org anytime soon. Not in 21.3, not in 22 versions, but the Linux Mint team wants it to be ready. They want to work on it. They want to support Wayland because that is the way to go. If you don't know what Wayland and X.org are, they're basically display protocols. They're what they're their software that is, that is, that's used to display stuff on your screen. X.org is very old and Wayland is the way to go. Isn't the default one when you log into Linux Mint? It lacks some features and it comes with its own limitations, but you can choose it to uh, you can choose Linux Mint to start with Wayland from the login screen. Now, there have been some other improvements as well. So Cinnamon, for example, in Cinnamon 6.0, 75% scaling is back. Window opacity key binding is back. Stylus buttons can be disabled. The monitor can be used uh, for notifications and it is now configurable. Plenty of other stuff. One of the better things about Linux Mint is that they created Warpinator. 
Warp Editor is an amazing tool if you want to transfer files from one computer to another. So I think they have a client for Windows as well. So what you would do is you would uh, log in to Warp Editor on both of your devices and you would turn on the internet on the same Wi-Fi network and they would recognize each other and then you could send files, photos, videos, whatever you like. The modification that they have done in this version is that they have added the ability to search for a computer by typing in the IP address or if you're on a phone, you can simply scan the QR code. I have personally used Warpinator when I was on Linux Mint a couple of years ago and it really was seamless and fantastic. It never gave me issues and I really recommend this app if you have some small files to transfer over. Let's go ahead and see some of the wallpapers because that's what we do on this channel. Again, Virginia with each Linux Mint version, Victoria, Vera, Vanessa, they release awesome wallpapers and each of them is better than the other. So let's go through a few of these and then we'll stick to one for this video. Corsica seems to be pretty good. We have Slovenia. Slovenia is looking pretty good as well. That is beautiful actually. We have Morocco. That's actually interesting. I think I'm going to stick to Morocco for this video. We have Sicily, which is in Italy. We have Switzerland, Cladding, China, Moon, and Temple, which was at the beginning of the video. Now, coming to gaming, if you are a gamer, Linux Mint, you may think that Linux Mint doesn't offer the same opportunity as Pop! OS because Pop! OS keeps on updating their Linux kernels and they test the Linux kernels to be working with their distributions. Now, if you type uname A, which basically gives us the kernel, you can see that this is still sticking to the 5.15 kernel, which is the LTS version that ships with Ubuntu. But there is a way to change that. You can either go ahead with a with the Edge version of Linux Mint, which I'm not sure if it has dropped yet. That is the version which usually has the updated kernels given to you uh, like after a few tests and as and when they drop. But the normal distribution that we get from Linux Mint sticks to the LTS version of the kernel, but there is a way to change that. So you can go to view and then Linux kernels and well, I opened it again beforehand and it did show me a warning that if your computer is unstable, just restart the computer and it had a few steps mentioned. If you come to this page, you're going to be greeted by that page for the first time. So uh, don't worry about that. It's safe and you can always change your kernel. For example, 5.15 is the one that it was launched with and it is supported till 2027. But if you want to play the latest games, not only if you are on an AMD or Intel Arc graphics card, but if you are on an NVIDIA graphics card as well, even though the GPU driver for NVIDIA is a separate package provided by them, it's not in the kernel itself, but still 6.5 would bring a ton of improvements to, for example, let's say the scheduler and other parts of your Linux operating system. So it's always a better idea to upgrade the kernel if you are a hardcore or even a casual gamer. Now this isn't a video about gaming, but I have had a guide in Pop! OS using Lutris for playing games in Linux, so you can go check that out. In all, it looks like a great distribution. Linux Mint, like I said, has always been one of my favorites. It's really amazing to see how something free, I mean, it's free for you, but a ton of people put a ton of effort and there are a lot of people who donate to the Linux Mint community. Uh, to, so if you are one of those guys, thank you. And let's hope Linux Mint is alive and well. And I would really love to see Linux Mint shine. One of the better things that Linux Mint does is you actually do not need to touch the terminal to do anything. Almost everything day to day can be done through the GUI which is a very good thing about Linux Mint. This is a very complete distribution and there is literally nothing to complain. You have everything that you would want in a distro. 
So with that, we come to the end of this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you stuck around to the end, I really don't have any word for you other than thank you. Thanks for sticking around. I know I haven't been available with Linux for more than a year, but I, I'm back and I promise to be more regular. So if you're here, let me know down in the comments if you are listening to me speak right now. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.